Hope your Friday is going well. I know it's the Red Wheel celebration going on, so I hope hope you stay safe and hope it's a good time for you. As um, as we come to the end of the week, just to remind you, we're having our live service at 9.30 Sunday. You're invited to come. We will have Holy Communion at the very end, and you will receive the elements as you are leaving the church. I thank everyone who's been helping out with getting that ready too, including our janitor, Morgan. And so as we look at, at different ways to worship, we pray that we can keep safe and not have any of those tragedies that have happened to um, in other churches. And just um, to let you know too, the um, Mike is going to have to send us a YouTube link again for the service that we will do before Sunday, to uh, do uh, to take to um, lead us into the Sunday worship service too, because um, he hasn't been able he hasn't had a chance to work on that yet. He's been busy between the school and now Red Power, so. Just to let you know those couple of things, and you can spread the word however you may need to. So it will, um, the service will not be on the website, is my understanding, but it'll be through a YouTube link again. And thank heavens Mike knows all about that stuff. <laughs> I'm doing what I can here. I want to share with you um, the first reading that comes on for this coming, uh, this Sunday on August 9th. It's one that I really haven't preached on, but I've referred to every once in a while. And thinking about how does God come to us? As we are dealing with COVID, we have um, different ways in which we've been worshiping. And we trust that God is coming to you in a spiritual, the spirit goes beyond boundaries, goes beyond walls and comes can come through the internet through youtube however it is facebook whatever however ways and hopefully we can see god coming and in, in positive uplifting ways not the narrow divisive ways that we've been hearing so often the prophet elijah um it's it's thought that he never saw earthly death and so that's one of the reasons why um, the Old Testament folks and the New Testament folks look at Jesus coming as the second of uh, the coming of Elijah. So that's why that's so important. But one of the stories that happens comes from First King, Kings, where God instructs Elijah to uh, anoint people as king and Elisha as his successor. And so this is the story that led up to it. Horeb is the name of the mountain, and that's where God appeared to Moses with many signs of God's presence, earthquake, wind, and fire, and so we get to see some of this with Elijah too. We read from 1 Kings 19, At Horeb, the mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. And then God said to Elijah, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone have left, 
and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abelamolhi, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall slay. Whoever escapes the sword from, of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Kind of harsh words, and I know that those are one of, that's one of the ways in which we don't really care that much maybe for the Old Testament is because of all the killing that goes on in it, and it's, it's attributed to, to God. And it's like, wow, we're saying God said these things, and so it's a hard thing for us. But God always leaves a remnant. God always leaves human beings that will be leading us into new ways. And even with COVID-19, I know that God is leading us, guiding us into new directions because that's what Elijah had to wait for, was a new direction, a new promise. And so we have that continually coming for to us and for us, always through human instruments. And as we continue on with, with the things that are leading, getting towards school, and all of that, we want to continue to remember the school system in our prayers. And we want to continue to lead all of our governmental leaders to put down the walls that are keeping each other at a distance, to realize the ways that we can work together instead of being divisive, to lead to good. Because we've got so many of our people, there is no good that comes when people are without work and cannot pay rent cannot pay for food, cannot pay for whatever, and so we pray for all. Let us join in prayer. God, you are our peace. You are our strength. You know our nation is in such turmoil, and so is our world. And we pray that you will help our governmental leaders put, to put down the forces that are wanting to throw rocks at each other. Instead, help them to see the one strand that can help them to pull together to help all the people that they are in charge of. We pray that you will help us all to see how we can put down the forces of evil that are hurting us and tearing us apart. Help us to face those uncertainties that are in our midst. Protect all who are very vulnerable among us. We pray for all who are currently sick and in isolation. We pray for all who are within a means of income, that that may get ironed out. And we pray that instead of looking at maybe going off to um, be in our own states to blame other people, we pray that you will help our governmental leaders to continue to come together. Grant them wisdom patience, and clarity as they work together to come up with a way to help all of your people. And we pray for your divine insight and wisdom to rest with our health care workers, especially as they care for others and all the great risk that they are put into. Guide all of us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families through our Savior's Lutheran Church in all workplaces, and in our Huron community. Give us the courage to face the days without fear, but help us to turn to compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. And Lord, we know that you are the wisest of all teachers. We give you thanks for the gift of reason, the opportunities of education, Bless all schools. We pray for our Huron School District, but we also pray for the uh, universities and colleges out there. And I know it's turned to more name of university. And we also pray for the trade schools as they are working towards how they can work together, whether it be online or in person. We 
May, it, may schools be your place of safety as they learn. And as the coronavirus offers us the opportunity to discover new safe ways to educate, we ask that you give us wisdom, patience, kindness, love, faith, and hope as we wrestle with the hard issues that present themselves in these challenging times. We pause to give thanks for the school administrators, the school boards, the teachers, all the other paraprofessionals, the support staff, all connected to our school district. We entrust all those that are dedicating themselves and, our, and their communities. We entrust those, these dedicated individuals and communities to your care, knowing that you will provide as you see need. We lift up parents and students as their hearts are anxious. Care for them, shepherding God, calm their fears, ease their burdens. Give us all good courage to march on in your name. And we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we go into the weekend, please do those only those things that you feel safe in doing. And we pray for God, guidance, hope, and love to continue to rest upon you. Have a good rest of the weekend. Bye for now.